the thing is, right, with, with you, Mr. Jake Lucky, I have a really hard time, like, putting my finger on, on how you, like, how you're defined and, and kind of your job role. Now, obviously, you're like a, an on-camera presenter. Like, I, I think that's um, very fair to say. And you're obviously a merch salesman as well. Um, but, like, there, there were some people um, calling for you to be considered Journalist of the Year, for example. Um, you very much lean into the, the personality side of what you're doing. And I mean, I think that's something uh, content creators in general have to do, but also journalists are doing more and more in like the, the media landscape as, as it's developing. Want to show that we've got personality and make people want to follow us outside of the big report. So like, I, I'm just curious as to how you define yourself. Like, have you, have you ever really put much thought into it? It seems like you go, go, go. So maybe you've not really spent a lot of time uh, considering where you really fit into things and you're just doing what you do, obviously very well. Oh, thank you very much. And uh, yeah, it's been definitely an interesting period to try and define that. I don't necessarily think it matters too much, but I, um, I think I've always gone on the leg that I'm not a, re- I'm not a journalist. I'm, I'm more so on the reporting side of things, you know, you and the Richard Lewis's and decays, those are the actual journalists, right? Uh, takes a bit more nitty gritty hands on behind the scenes work. And I simply, I, I'm a face. I like to talk about things and I kind of, that, that's where I tied the content to of like what you said, right? It's almost And I've talked to other figures out there. It's almost just like a form of content creation, right? Uh, It is reporting, but I would never refer to myself as a journalist. You know, there might be a few one-off times uh, in the past or in my future where hopefully I can can be that. But I would say mainly, uh, I would almost lean towards a personality slash reporter who just loves talking about everything esports and gaming. Okay. And then obviously we've got Crone who runs CDL Intel. He went from posting Reddit rumors on Twitter and build up, building up a following that way to now he's freelance writing for Dot Esports and he's he's actually officially releasing these rumors and, and substantiating the claims and, and using sources that he's built up. Um, so we've seen it happen there. And you just mentioned like in the future, that is something you're interested in. So do you, do you see a time in which you're fully, you're fully going for it and, and, and you know, like you can't you can't have biases and such in in journalism, right? And like yeah. you like receiving merch and like bantering with certain teams and stuff. So like that could be um, uh, someone could maybe hold that against you. I, I would I would maybe say in like if you were like super serious journalism, like oh why aren't you reporting about Team Liquid when you're wearing their jerseys all the time? Blah 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 blah. You know. So like you 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 definitely yeah. see that in in the future for yourself. You know, I think it'd be more of a one-off here and there. Luckily enough, when when uh, over the past year, it's been amazing to see some growth. So it's been with that growth where you, you develop these contacts and, and more of these sources who might give you a story every once in a while. And I think that would be the the small taste of journalism that I would, I would have there to fully go into it. I, I just don't think that's necessarily in my future, you know, given the personable right. side of it. And I, I like to think that, especially on Twitter, those interactions and yeah, what some people might hold against me and, and fair play if they do might come off as, as biases. Um, I think that would definitely hurt me in that kind of thing. And yeah. I'll just say it. I think it's really hard in today and age to make it someone like yourself or the few names you can name in journalism strictly. Mm-hmm. And I don't think that would necessarily be something that I would want to go head into no. knowing how difficult it is. Yeah. No, that, that makes complete sense. And look like that's why I've flirted with, with like creating videos in the past. And, and here we are speaking right now. It's like, it feels like it's almost not enough these days to just put out good work in terms of like journalistic reports and stuff. Mm-hmm. It's like, <clears throat> you also have to get people invested in, in who you are or at least offer a bit more. So while I'm not going to start doing like v- vlogs and stuff like that, you know, and like, hey guys, here we are today. I'm going to take you grocery shopping with me and then I'm going to shave my head and all this. None of that shit's ever going to happen. Make sure right? to check but... out my article later. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Right at the end, like, click the notification bell and read my um, hard hitting piece on blah, blah, blah. Like, it's never going to work that way. <laughs> but if, if I can, well, if I can have chats with people who are interesting or perhaps we don't hear from on like a more personal side and uh, I can kind of show my personality that way and still. Um, I, I guess it feels like a natural extension of what I'm doing. So that makes complete sense. But I also understand, like, I, I don't, I don't feel like I could attempt to do what you're doing and do what I'm doing at the same time. It feels like it's a, a one or the other thing, you know? Yeah, for sure. I mean, there's only, you can name so many names out there who are either journalists 
or reporter. And then you kind of have the people I would say like me or like a Travis Gafford, right? How would you yeah. identify him in this space? Cause he does interviews and certainly has his ties maybe to particular players a bit more frequently. Um, but it's not the Jacob Wolf of the League of Legends scene. And then it's not Ashley Kang either or a Decay or Richard Lewis. So yeah, I think it's I think there's a lot of space for different characters and segments in esports. But you're right, like to, to be a journalist as well as the personality and reporter. I don't know if there's ever going to be someone who can fully have the time to dedicate to all of those no. facets. No. And, and I mean, but my like something I'm really interested in, like how how does this happen for you? Like how, how do you get into this position, right? Because I you were doing a CSGO, you had a CSGO channel before, and right, like that I wasn't, I'd be honest with you, I didn't really pay attention at that point. So I can't, I can't act like I know loads about what you were doing there. But was it just a case of you really being a CSGO fan and just discussing that? And then it naturally leading to look like I can get more views and there's more to cover if I go more broader and cover like gaming and esports. Like, like how, how did you get into this, this kind of role at esports talk? I would say it's it's pretty lucky. I think uh, a lot of creators or streamers out there can relate to making a transition at some point in your career, you know, whether it be from one game to another, kind of trying to make that jump because you realize you can't make it in that field. Yeah, I was actually I was making RuneScape videos a long time ago. <laughs> then I, I, I tried vlogging. And at this point, I was then late in my college career. And I'm like, do I want to have a business job or do I want to maybe I, again, I was I was trying everything. So yeah. I, I really stick to the fact that I got very, very ironically lucky. Uh, I uh, started CSGO News my junior year of college. It took off a bit into my senior year. And then towards the end of my senior year, I was like, can this be a lifetime thing? Uh, I was thinking very, very long-term, can I only cover Counter-Strike for the rest of my life and provide for what I want in the future? And a lot of doubts entered my mind. And it was just by some odd chance that I found a job uh, out here in Las Vegas for Esports Talk. And it was kind of those general guidelines. I'd actually tried an East, I tried an esports news channel for like a couple of weeks with a friend of mine. Busted, right. didn't work out, but it, it was kind of similar to what they had. So I, I used my CSGO channel as my resume, have you? Mm -hmm. And that was about two and a half years ago. And it kind of has been building as to what we want to cover and trying to identify our, our spot in the space. So I guess bottom line, very, very lucky, but I've, I've been creating content for some time and you kind of have to figure out what you really do enjoy and, and hope that some of it sticks. Yeah, I think you have to put yourself in a position to be lucky or, or at least um, be the right kind of person to, um, I, I guess, take advantage of the luck if, if you want to put it that way, right? Like it, it's, it's no coincidence that like the harder you work, the more lucky you, you tend to get. So look like if you'd, you'd already put in a lot of time doing what you were doing, and obviously shown like an aptitude towards it and a, an enjoyment in doing it. And I'm sure you were rather consistent there as well and, and rather productive. Then like, I, I don't know how much you can say really is luck. You know, like, do, do you genuinely feel like you've just fallen into where you are now? Or you, you surely be able to recognize that you've, you've put in some graft, right? Yeah, I, I guess that goes for a lot of figures out there. I think there's so many people in esports and gaming who have put their nose to the grindstone and are working just as hard as I am. Mm -hmm. I guess I say I, I got lucky in the fact that, you know, this past year, or I guess over the past couple of years, I've been lucky enough to not only retain, but I think uh, maybe, maybe uh, it's, uh, there's always a doubt in my head, but maybe solidify more of a future in esports and gaming for myself. And so for that, I, I always think about what if, right? Like what if I had not, branched out from CSGO? What if I had not taken this job? Mm -hmm. I always wonder if I would be in the same situation um, success, success wise as I am now. And so I, I just feel very fortunate for the timing of everything uh, to ending up where I am here. Mm -hmm. and, and I guess like we're, we're too busy um, watching you model like shots and like uh, keeping everyone up to date with what's going on to like actually like <clears throat> know what you do outside of esports. And this is a question I'm finding myself really interested in. In, in most people these days because <clears throat> on Twitter it's near enough always about esports right like we we almost like, yeah almost have to live and breathe it and, and especially like in our kind of jobs like you have to stay on top of things you have to know what's going on at any given moment and, and more so you actually because you're kind of covering the more general casual gaming and influencer side of stuff as well because that's obviously where the views views is and that's not a secret to anyone just look at Deserto and and see how that's set up as plenty of influencers on there as well right so like outside of esports like do you have much of a life right now like are you dedicating 100 to, to the grind <laughs> as such right you're drinking your coffee 
you're driving to the office at 4.30 in the morning and fucking cracking on for hours, like, or, or you're um, definitely alcohol-free drink there. Um, yep. <laughs> um, you know what I mean? Like, what what do you do outside of work? Or are you 100% in on eSports at the moment? Because I know that's, that's many people. They feel they have to just keep their head down and not have any life outside of their job just to, yeah, just to stay afloat. <laughs> That's a, a super solid question. I, I would like to bounce back to you as well, because I mean, you've oh, been shit. at this for a lot longer time, right? I think uh, I've been here for such a short period of time, and I genuinely love what I do. I just really enjoy bantering, talking about esports and gaming. And I feel like I, I keep on learning year over year, or, you know, as, as much as day over day. I do have a life outside esports and gaming yeah. um, in constant search of, 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 um, of a, a lady friend, you know, who would like to mm -hmm. share this success with me. Yeah. But besides, besides the jokes, obviously, I, I think a, a huge portion, I think you can probably um, kind of be on this side as well, is trying to say, stay mentally sane. No matter what you're doing, doesn't have to be esports or gaming, no matter what mm -hmm. job you do day in and day out, the same routine, having to stay like happy, gen genuinely happy. I think this year has been a great example of mental health yeah. is so important. And so I do have downtime. I, uh, I definitely watch my movies. I play my video games when I can with friends. I think a main thing for me is uh, I actually work out. I try and work out five times a week around there for a good period of time. Just get away, listen mm -hmm. to music and try and stay sane. So I, I would say a typical day I'm on my computer a lot, but I don't think that's full time working. Right. Right. Um, so I, I'm in the office working just a reasonable time. Um, and then I, I definitely had time for myself to just try and keep at it. Yeah, yeah. I think that's a really important message because it is promoted like the whole grind thing, right? It is really promoted. Like there's that video of Hex that I shared around where it's like, oh, this gets me hype. And it's like, yeah, it's cool. But like, no, you don't have to work 24 seven and do some absolute mad shit and never take time for yourself and your family and friends and like to decompress like, You'll, if you want to be productive, you need to take a fucking break and like you need to go move your body a bit and you need to make sure that you're taking whatever steps you feel necessary to just, as you say, not lose your, your fucking mind because I got in trouble. Oh, really? <laughs> I got in trouble for this a while ago. Uh, it was actually probably several months ago. I got in trouble with like the entire League of Legends community for uh, a tweet that I put out there about like work every day, you know, grind every day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it was around the point where everyone in the, in the, in the scene was debating, you know, working for free or working for pay or overworking and burning out. Yeah. And I, I wanted to be inspirational and I was like, <laughs> <laughs> work every single day, you know, when you can, yeah. I can't read the exact tweet that really does matter. Okay. Yeah. Um, but I remember so many people got mad at me for saying work every day when in reality I go into the office every day and I work every day, but it, it's reasonable hours. Uh, it's yeah. not like I'm, working 10 hours every single day but I, I felt like in the esports and gaming space especially in my shoes only i'm not talking from a caster standpoint or other jobs but from the news outlet standpoint i have to be checking the news every day and so that's what i more so i meant to but yeah. there's definitely a lot of people that have a lot of different takes on you know what kind of grind you have to be on mm -hmm. to really make it in gaming and esports yeah yeah and I, I the thing is the reason i've come to the the, the place where I am now where I realize that it's not good for you is I, I was one of those people, you know, where it's just like, I, I didn't take a day off for a year and a half, not one day off. I was working a full-time job and freelancing for esports inside or other websites on the side and uh, being the weekend editor for Cybersport, rest in peace, um, on, on, <laughs> on the weekends as well, right? And I didn't take a single day off. And you're like, you think like, oh, I'm being the most productive person I can be. Like, this is going to set me up great for future. But it's like, okay, what happens when you start to feel like shit? What happens when you lose kind of the passion for what you're doing? What happens when your friends, family, any sort of social life, everything else fall, falls to the wayside? Like you're like, you're a stud and you, you're desperate for a girlfriend. Like, you know what I mean? Like if, if you were working all the time, there's no chance you're ever going to get one, you know? So I, <laughs> I, I just think it, I, I do think it's an important message just to send out there. Um, and I think since you're involved in this video, uh, you'll bring in more viewers than me, thankfully. So thank you very much for that. But like, so I, I just think it's, it's something worth iterating, you know, and, and, and speaking of like not losing, losing your passion, I definitely did uh, probably midway through this year. And um, I, I left Esports Insider uh, to go to the Certo. And as you say, like every day is kind of a ball now. It's like I speak to people and I give my opinions for a living, like very, very fortunate that's the case. I wouldn't say lucky. I feel like I kind of um, earned the position I'm in. But of course, a little bit of luck along along the way, and and now 
because I'm giving myself a break and I'm enjoying what I'm doing. Like the passion's back. So like considering you're doing what you do day in, day out, what, what is it that, that's driving you? Like what, what is it, what's the, the, like the core ethos behind what you're doing? It can't just to be like, I need to keep the people informed or, or maybe it is exactly that, you know, like what, what is it that makes you tick? Yeah. It's not necessarily waking up every day. Like got to tell some people some stuff, you know, the people just, need uh, to know. <laughs> Yeah, that's, uh, I think that's a very interesting point to make and a question that I would be curious about a lot of people's answers because mm-hmm. I think people are motivated by all sorts of yeah. uh, different things and each to their own right. I think for me personally, when it comes down to the bottom line, I have bad days. It, it's a roller coaster. Like uh, my, my job is very view dependent, sub count dependent. When I have a bad day and, and people aren't enjoying the content, I don't enjoy myself. And right. so um there is there is certainly like you know if I get a lot of views on something it will it will affect my mood and personality I think when it comes down to the very core and base though uh when I think super long term is I I can only hope that I'm I'm building something that other people can take from or at least bettering the space in some way I I always come back to trying to think is esports and gaming a better space with or without me and Mm -hmm. I I like to think even if you don't like me that I, that I can bring more eyes to the space. And that is at least something positive mm-hmm. as well as hopefully building something that can be maybe like the, the, what we wanted ESPN to be right. Something that can provide jobs or something for other people who are right now, 12, 13, 14, a uh, future in gaming. Um, so I, I guess those kind of all dependent upon my future goals. That's what I right. always come back to is, is hopefully I'm a part of something like that. Right. And then since you brought up ESPN, I think like, this is a good little area to dive into a little bit. And look, I'm not looking to get you in trouble by any means. So, of course, don't say anything you don't want to say. I, I'm the one who will put my foot in my mouth here. Um, I tend to be the guy who gets in shit anyway. So I think you're safe in this one. Uh, <laughs> but look, I, I think it's a trend every six months, every nine months or so, a publication goes. Like we saw it um, with Cybersport, as I say. I think that was uh, early 2019, late 2018, something like that. And then there's been VP Esports. They had the big crash. They're still going, but nowhere near the capacity they're at now. There was Upcomer, which, you know, I, cut, I called out and, and Kevin hit denied it and said I was lying. And then publicly never said anything. And then privately came into my DMs and said, yes, he was wrong. That's just a little side note for everyone there. And now obviously with ESPN as well, like, um, so, so we've both seen some of these come, but all of these go. Like what? What? What do you? What do you kind of pin this on? Do you think there's a singular problem? Because like the state of media as a whole is really difficult right now. Some people are tucked away behind paywalls. Other others are ads. Every single like paragraph. Like look, look at like I work for Deserto. Really rate mm-hmm. Deserto, but like ads are prevalent there. You know, like I, I I think it's a difficult landscape anyway. And then you look at esports, which is a growing industry, but it's still nowhere near as big as like gaming, for example. So like, I I think there are many different issues. Is there something you've kind of noticed the trend throughout all of those? Oh, hundred percent. I think I I like to always keep an eye on, I I love competition. I've always said it like, you know, rising tide will raise all of us together. Mm -hmm. The better Dexerto does, the better I do. I think vice versa as well. Um, Those kind of outlets. I I like to think that esports talk and Dexerto have a lot of crossover and uh, have likely given each other, if not stories, some great talking points. And um, it's, it's been very interesting to try and identify other competitors. We see a lot pop up and a lot fade away. And I know that I like to go back and forth with Dexerto on Twitter or other outlets on Twitter, but it's all jokes at the end of the day, because sure. I have nothing but respect for people who have built something and it's, it's necessary. Uh, when ESPN had those layoffs and eventually shut down esports entirely, I was, I was more so angry at ESPN than anything. I, I didn't, you know, those guys would go on to find great jobs, but at the end of the day, that hurts the entire scene in terms of potential, what it could have been, right. you know, what we, what we expect out of an ESPN is to bring more to the scene. And I don't think they ever lived up to that potential. And so more so than anything, I was pissed off because, you know, we can only lose so many sites before. I mean, who's going to aspire to be a writer or someone in videos Mm -hmm. or to do news, which I do think is a core part to why we see sports doing so well. There's talking points every single day. And I'm sure we can lead into this. There's a reason why at eSports Talk, and I know you've been, I've seen you talk about this a lot. We talk a lot more about gaming news than we do direct eSports news. It makes a lot of sense. Like 
it, it sucks, but you know, unfortunately, so if, if Tom Brady, you know, does something controversial, an actual sports athlete that gets views. If, if uh, TSM Wardell does the same controversial thing, love the guy to death. He's hilarious. The viewership is just not there as compared to if a streamer did that controversial thing. Sure. So, but it, it takes these building blocks and to see ESPN out the door, it takes away a couple of those. And um, I don't, I don't know, man, I, I want more competition. I just don't know what the future is, right? Is it, is it articles? Is it more video people? Do we cover the drama direct results? Sorry, this is a huge tangent, but it's, it's also a huge deal for our future in the for news sure. realm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's a really tricky one. And I mean, hmm, do I want to go on? Like, well, I, I, don't, I don't necessarily think uh, all of the writers at ESPN were, the, were as strong as many people said. I think there was some sort of ESPN buff myself, where if you join ESPN, automatically you're viewed as like, some writing messiah and you are now top one in the industry no matter what that's that's my opinion um that could be yeah it could be a fair take yeah I, I i i don't think jacob falls into that but that's all i'll say on that matter uh i i think he's proven himself time and uh time and time right i i think it's, it's a tricky one and i i i we see now with like morning brew and like some of the su successful like tech startup uh, publications and stuff like that were big on newsletters for example like they're they're personality led. So someone like yourself, like it is like an I ideal capture for a publication right now. I, I would say like I I'm not involved in any decision making process at Deserto, but like someone like a publication like Deserto would like benefit from having someone like yourself, right? I th I think that's the way media is going. Um, but you can also uh, create articles out of the content you would create, for example, or another on camera personality so I, I think there's some sort of maybe not secret sauce but like that there is a symbiotic relationship between the two forms of media as long as the house under the brand with the same kind of approach i guess and obviously make, make sure they're the same standard uh it's, it's a really tricky one and look like esports talk has has um dust in there i don't know if there's any other writers there um but it has its own publication side as well but it from i don't i don't know the views of esports talk the website but it seems like it's carried very much by the video side. Is that, is that fair to say? Yeah, I think that'd be fair to say. And I think that just goes to show that building a website, getting someone nowadays to type in your website is so, so difficult. Oh, Attention Christ. spans are shorter than ever. And uh, yeah, I, and I think uh, I would make the argument. And again, I don't think we mean anything offensive back and forth that Dexerto is very article based. Yeah. And so you know, that's what you guys are known for, right? The, the, the quick writes, the quick news mm -hmm. and people click and read and developing that kind of audience elsewhere outside of Dexerto is, is now very, very tough. So, sure. you know, I think you're right. I think there's a, a, a secret mix that can be utilized in the future for more of a crossover. Um, like you said, some videos can make some great articles and vice versa. Some articles can make some great videos um, and definitely has uh, in the past. It just, <laughs> uh, you know, I, I want to know, I want to know who's next. I want yeah, to know. I wanted to play a game with you. I wanted to say, let's predict who's the next publication to die. Oh, I was going to say who's the next to, to actually take off, but okay. Oh, shit. <laughs> let's do a bit Mr. of both. Chris <laughs> Cooper. <laughs> it's like, it's like um, we're inside no. someone's brain and you're like the angel, like the positive side of the brain. And I'm just like <laughs> the negative, like the devil, like, no, burn it all. Like, <laughs> that's how I feel we are right now. But like, do, do you think like, because like Dot seemingly doing well, Deserto seemingly doing well. Mm. Esports Observer um, pivot into more casual, uh, more more casual gaming. Um, stuff. They still call themselves esports, but it's not esports really anymore. Um, esports Insider, um, it's an events model uh, with a publication. HLTV, it's an affiliate gambling website masquerading as a as a news website. Oh, you just said that. I said what? Okay. <laughs> HLTV is a necessity yeah. to see us go. I'll leave it at that. They, they, they do a great job in counter. I wish, despite what you just said, I, I do truly wish there was an HLTV for every eSport. Well, Cod will get one soon uh, from what I hear. So that would be interesting. See, I oh, Cod is such a weird, weird <laughs> eSport to me. Okay. Yeah. If, if there is one eSport that has, yes, it is steady viewership, hopefully grows in the future, but it's not anything mind-blowing. No. But if there's an audience that follows loyally, more than COD, please tell me because no, it's mental. That's that's the one scene where if there is drama, 
especially in season, um, definitely had my off weeks, but I have to cover it because that audience is, is actually cares more than I, I would sure. argue Fortnite, but that's more only like a, a few niche channels. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I, that esport is, is so bizarre to me. So a dedicated news website that just makes sense. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, like we know Rob, we both know yeah. Tactical Rob, I'm sure like he, he has breaking point with a few other people from the co community. Mm -hmm. Um, so it, it seems to me like they're maybe trying to do what HL TV does for CSGO. I don't Dad, know. I, I haven't spoken boys, to him. Boys, I honestly should, I should have shouted out Rab a long time ago because I, I've talked to Rab a, quite a bit back and forth. Uh, if there's anyone watching that wants to um, aim somewhere in, in terms of focusing on a single esport and branching out an audience, oh, Rab incredible. has to be y your example. Like I, I am not bragging and I'm not, I'm not trying to be <laughs> i don't know what the word is but Here we go. he's I, about I to see, brag <laughs> i i i was on a very similar path as rab but in csgo so i, I see yeah, so yeah. much of i have so much respect for that kid yeah he literally grinds day in and day out and truly if there is someone like him in every other esport like you've seen the success he finds and he will continue to find mm -hmm. and so I, i'm excited to see because what, what was it better collective and hltv earlier was that this yeah. year yeah yeah um yeah it was this year yeah maybe like uh may yeah i mean i think it was right around the pandemic i mean mm. goodness gracious yeah if you want to make a potential big uh big payday in the future build mm. your own oh for sure and i i'm gonna put you in the hot seat a little bit right now so rob is independent a lot of successful people in media at the moment are independent. You are not independent. Is that something that interests you? Is all I'm going to say. I was going to be harsh here, but I'm going to be nice <laughs> to you today. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Next time I know you should dodge the question about which publication is going to be the next to crash as well, but uh, we'll save that for another I one. As well. I only dodge because I actually only have ones that I think would take off, but <laughs> <laughs> um, maybe that's just me being too positive today. Of course. Um, of course, it's crossed my mind, but I, I have come back to it time and time again. I'm very lucky to be where I am. Mm -hmm. And I think, um, yeah, it's just the stress, the anxiety that would come along with being independent. I don't know if my fragile little mind can handle that right now. So thankfully right now I am not independent and don't foresee that in the future either. Mm. I, I don't know if that would ever be something I'd actually. I, uh, so you said unless, about building your own. I know, but that dude. It's, it's not just, very stable. That, that's probably the biggest issue. If it, if it's view based, like that, that's you you can never you're never guaranteed a view, right? Yeah. So like you have to I mean, deal with that stress daily. You throw me a successful sideshow on Twitch, like by the numbers, like a Richard Lewis and Thorn pull off with subscriber, you know, people out there that are willing to dedicate an extra side income to you. Yeah. Maybe even then, maybe you know, I think they do it very well, but I don't have that, right? I all I have is. It, you, to your point, it'd be view based. It would be month by month YouTube checks, and that's just I can't imagine. So no, I'm very thankful where I am. But um, mm. respect to everyone out there who rides independent. I can't imagine that right now. No, no, especially during what what we're going through right now. So like that's oh. just an added layer of bullshit to your life, right? But um, so just just to clarify clarify for me, but I think it'll be interesting to other people as well. Like so, your capacity with an esports talk, you're solely an, an employee. You're not like that, that, that's it they employ you you churn out videos get them loads of views and and that, that's the that's the kind of relationship there yep uh a lot of people are rightfully confused about this uh i am an employee of esports talk there is there's no co-owner in my title i am not lucky as the early uh phase members are yeah it's just uh crank out videos and and hope this thing succeeds long term um i'm gonna put you in a hot seat a little bit actually like, so you, you've had a, I think probably the past 18 months, but especially like this past year fr from what I can kind of see, but obviously you're more involved in what happens with you. So, you know, better, but like, it seems like it's been steady and consistent growth, but also like good growth, like where you were 18 months ago in terms of followers and stature in the industry and stuff compared to where you are now. Like if you look at who you interact with on Twitter and such, like you can definitely see some sort of progression there. Esports talk, right? Did they lock you into a really long contract, or have you at least managed to like secure yourself the bag in the last eighteen months? I need to know that. I need to know. That's an interesting question that you asked. Um, 
Se securing the bag will definitely be a thing that I will try to do in the okay. future. Okay. I don't think, uh, I think you can relate to this. Maybe. Oh, I get paid peanuts. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I don't think there's many <laughs> bags being tossed around in our fields. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I think that's a, a joke, lot of us Mike. Mike Kent DeSoto, that's a joke. You pay me well. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. <laughs> I love you, Mike. Um, I, I think it's very, very tough to be to be making the bag where we are in this space. It's so early on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's hundred percent a hope of mine. Like I, I want to provide, and that's that's no doubt. Um, I am in a contract. I will say that. Um, They're looking was for it, them. What was it signed? Maybe right before things started taking off. Maybe. Uh, probably shouldn't comment any more than that, but I've uh, been very, very fortunate to have a contract. Again, that yeah. kind of stability for me is, is huge. I get yeah. very stressed out very easily. So very thankful for where I am. And uh, yeah, I think definitely over the past summer, Dr. Disrespect kind of sparked a lot for the channel. Mm. And I can only hope that the drama and some big news keeps on coming. It's, it's been nice, consistent growth, but certainly there are down months, right? When you have a high month, you're going to have a low month. Of course. When you go up, you come down. And for me, it's been a very, very big mental game of, you know, can we keep it up? And uh, I think Twitter has been a blessing for all of us. Uh, when you can find your right space in Twitter, I, I think there's so much potential there. And mm -hmm. uh, I, have, I have a lot of fun with it. I, I think at one point, I've, I've grown more on Twitter than the channel has because it's just so much fun to just talk you know it's a much yeah, easier yeah. platform to do so very very closer yeah. uh, closer interactions i yeah i think twitter is a, a weird one i've been struggling to to work out how i fit into that or how i want it to fit into my life probably for the past year well i went when i first came on onto the scene i guess like after i got my first six months under my belt i, I was just arguing with everyone I was like, no, you're all idiots. I know everything. You know nothing. Mm -hmm. Let's argue. This is good for me. People will see me being right in the public space and then like me and then follow me. And like these days, I like I I don't really reply to tweets. I don't really read Twitter too much. As well. I, re I read it for work purposes, but not really personal <clears throat> purposes anymore. I, I use it as like a one-way communication tool. Uh, and that's definitely not the best way to grow, but maybe that's like, for me, the best way to keep some semblance of sanity and and... Like, I think you need to disconnect sometimes. So like seeing, seeing how you use Twitter, that, that would do my head in. Like, so <laughs> it's, it's, it's interesting. It's interesting. That, well, whatever works for you, you know, I, I think that's something I want to stress to esports people as well. Like there's no best practice in this industry. I don't think there's any real best practice in this industry. I think it's too young and people are figuring things out and things change so much. So like, I don't think like an esports course. I don't think like you can just learn from one mentor and then know everything. I, I think like it's it's about doing your own thing and, and finding what works for you. Like you did with your channel, your CSGO channel. Um, I kind of did the same with my freelancing. It took me a while to land on uh, explicitly on the business side, but I found out that worked for me. Um, and if I listen to everyone else, they'd say, no, don't go into the business side because there's no viewership there. But then I wouldn't be where I am. Uh, and, and so forth. I, I think it's a, it's a really tricky one and, and, and trying to, I don't know. I, I, I don't even know how I try and get into esports now. I haven't, I've not even been in it three years yet, but I look now and, and how saturated it is. It's, it's insane, mate. And, and um, so I think we're, if, if I'm going to accept that looks a part of any of this, it's just like, we're lucky that we've got in now rather than trying to get in in the future. It's how yeah. I feel for sure. I, but, yeah, I mean, back to the Twitter thing very briefly. Um, <laughs> yeah. cer certainly everyone handles it differently. And I think uh, Richard Lewis actually nailed it. Very, very short speaking uh, with Hex, Hector Rodriguez, you know, how I don't have ownership of esports talk, right? So if I if I were to, um, you know, whatever the future plans may be, the only thing I would have is, is my Twitter, right? So yeah. I don't have any hands on. So I definitely have taken at least a bit of a different approach. But I also just genuinely really, I love the interactions. I think it's very fun to talk esports and gaming in some takes on Twitter, I can't make videos about everything. So I just tweet things. Um, and yeah, I mean, certainly to the flip side of that has gotten me in trouble and you kind of expose yourself to the comments. You don't want to see even more the mm -hmm. replies you don't want to see because people, you know, not everyone's always going to agree with you. So I've definitely had my trouble there. I think mm -hmm. another, another interesting thing has been the esports merch which some people have, you know, taken to others, maybe not so much. Yeah. And it's uh, definitely, I like to think my different kind of 
of thing on Twitter, at least to show those kind of things off. And yes, I might bag a bit too much here and there, but it's, it certainly causes a bit more talking points. And Twitter has been a very interesting space. You know, if you tweet too many times about a hundred thieves, the phase fans will invade and they'll question you about, oh, shit. A, about those political. things. Yeah. I, but it's also, you know, you get, you get the, the negative interactions, but you get some really creative takes, which it's mm. definitely added some spice to my life. And the last thing I'll say about it is it can, I'm on Twitter almost every minute of the day. I'm just refreshing and I don't know how long that's going to last. Hopefully to not long, honest. mate. I, I hope it doesn't last long for you. <laughs> I hope you have an assistant yeah. soon that just is like a Twitter assistant and can just go, <laughs> oh, this might be interesting. Nate yeah, Shot just said uh, everyone's shit. And you're like, yeah, oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> cam- cameraman, get, get it rolling. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? You can just hop into the seat, bust it out 10 minutes quick, make a bad. 100%. Uh, is there anything you like, uh, any, anything content-wise you wish you could do that you just don't have the capacity to do at the moment? Because it, it, I'm not saying it's a one-man army. You've obviously got um, uh, people in production who help you. Um, but it... it like when you think of esports talk, you think of you, right? So I'm going to say that that's how it is. What what what's what's something you want to do that you can't get to? Because there must be something. There's the next barrier, my man. There's the next barrier. That's land events. Um, okay. Oh shit! It's going to be like some custom V shit. <laughs> you know, hell. you shouldn't I, be allowed in, mate. I reckon you're going to be a health and safety risk. I think that's that has to be um, my next step. And uh, I'm very excited for it. One sec. There we go. Come on there. $4 camera. Uh, <laughs> I actually get incredibly nervous talking to anybody. Like uh, once I warm up to Are people. Are you nervous I'm speaking like, to me now? I was when I started. Like oh, I, shit. it's just, it's just natural anxiety right. that I get. Okay. And then a couple minutes in, I get back to my goofy self. But like I, um, one thing that really excites me is once all this is over, if we can hopefully have our next level of content be, in-person interviews with all of these with all of these stars and these players mm-hmm. that is something i am so excited about and i hope i can break that barrier in i remember call of duty uh when we actually were able to have those first opening events yeah i don't know if i don't think you were with dexerto at the time but espn and dexerto were the only two that were allowed at the events and those videos killed oh, it really? it was amazing to, or at least i shouldn't say allowed they were the only ones that were actually there all right okay so I'll maybe the only ones actually yeah <laughs> um <laughs> But I mean, those, those videos killed it. You got to see personal interactions and a diehard Call of Duty audience. Mm -hmm. And if I can somehow do that, but for more than just Call of Duty uh, and start to really have these relationships where all of a sudden, if there's no LAN event, we have call-ins with pro players, that's the next step. And so I think for me, there's, I always just have this anxiety of like talking to really cool people. And once I can get over that hurdle and LAN events come back, I'm just, uh, I'm super excited where things can be. And I think that land environment obviously is the best thing for all of esports. So I'm excited yeah. to be back to it. That That is the pinnacle of esports, right? Like seeing competition and the atmosphere. I think that's something that events have been missing a lot. But like on the note of really cool people, like making you nervous, like do you look down on people ever? Are you the kind of person who looks down on people? What kind of question is that? No. It's a two-parter. Okay, so why are you oh, looking up God. at people and thinking they're above you? If you don't think you're above other people, why do you think people are above you? That's a tricky question. Think um, about that tonight with your your blue wicked or whatever you're drinking, and you know <laughs> the cheap stuff. It might, um, might help you out no. a little bit. It's, it's something I've used to genuinely like rewire how because I, I I have interviewed like Scump and Crim Six, and I was like, <clears> um, I I was in Texas and I, I came out of Starbucks with my frappuccino, whatever it was, and like Hex was just stood there, and it's like I. I got into his, I like was a fan of esports from 2007 because of optic, like playing shipment with them. So like at that point I was like, Oh shit, I'm nervous. And then I was like, why am I nervous? They're all nerds. They just play games. They're just like us. Like, why am I going to get nervous? You know? So now I had to rewire it. That's an amazing way to put it. Um, I like to think that I'm, I'm, I'm still going to be nervous, especially for, you know, it, you know, cross my fingers that there are some big interviews in the future, no matter yeah. what. Yeah. But I think the initial hurdle is, is once you talk to a few pro players, get the hang of it. Um, you know, hopefully those nerves go away and I stop mm. seeing them as like, you know, these idols and I just see yeah. them as professional players as they are. But for me, there's always that initial hurdle. I'll give you a, a quick story. It sure was thing, actually, but- there's no chance these guys remember this. It was actually in Las Vegas two years ago. 
um, before pandemic and everything, Nate shot and hex and all those guys love to gamble in Vegas. Right. Mm -hmm. I was randomly in a pizza place inside a casino and I, I was just starting. We had probably 6,000 subscribers. I look over to my right and there's hex and Nate shot walking through the casino and mm -hmm. instantly, I kid you not, I'm a fragile man. Instantly, <laughs> hands quivering, like just shaking. I'm like, guys, I got to go like, just say hi really quick. I'm running up to these guys because they're walking away, hands shaking like, Hex, nay shot. And I, they eventually turn around. They gave me, mm. only Hex gave me knuckles. I was like, yo, love what you guys do. Uh, Nate shot asked me like what team to bet on. He, he said, should I bet on the Cubs? I was like, yeah, they lost the game. Um, and then- Dude, I, I like to think that nowadays I wouldn't be that nervous, right? Yeah. But it's progressive. I, I'll get there eventually. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, that, that makes sense. And I think also, like, if, you, if you've if you grown up, like, watching people play, so, like, if you've grown up watching Crim6 play or whatever since COD4, or, like, obviously he came from Halo, but say, like, Cloyster since COD4, and, like, you've only ever seen him in, like, those environments, it's one thing. But then when you see them in person and you realize, oh, they're just – a real person who's just actually good at playing games and they're like oh they are a tangible thing they're 3d and they're like oh he's actually smaller than me okay this is weird and like uh, it, it just changes things a little bit when you stop it's like a movie star you only ever see them on the big screen right uh yeah. it's, it's just and, and it's almost a bit jarring when you actually see oh these do exist and they're not just like some internet beings but no sure. I, mean, I, I think like look like you're going to get to the point where if you go to these events say like if you keep doing what you're doing now in a year or two and you go to these events, you're going to have people who are nervous to come up to you. You're going to have these kids who are 13, 14, 16 or whatever that are going to be like, oh shit, I've watched this guy every day for three years. How the fuck do I go up and approach this guy and not seem weird, but also show that I appreciate what he does. Like and that, the, the exact same thing is going to come to you, man, if you go that way. Me, I'm borderline anonymous. I'm fine. But you're, you're asking for this life. You're putting yourself out there. <laughs> Yeah, it'll be it'll be uh, interesting the next couple of years. You know, cross our fingers we're both here, and we'll we'll see how those stones how those stones fall. Oh, I'll be out of esports by then, mate. Fuck. <laughs> I don't hate myself that much to be working in it for five years. <laughs> that is a joke, Mike. I am staying with Desoto until twenty seventy. <laughs> 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 Fucking hell, man. But no, and and just to just to cap things off. Um, really easy question. I'm not going to try and catch you off guard by any means. Uh, which fan base do you hate the most? I just had a feeling, you know. <laughs> okay. Um, what is the one me. that annoys you more than others, even though you still love them? That's a better way to phrase it. I will say I do not hate any fan base. I know people will see clips of me or they'll just watch one. And <laughs> there it is. Right. I zoned out for a second there. I have my eyes closed and you're doing that. <laughs> um, I understand that, you know, it's, it's very tough to have everyone like you. Mm -hmm. And I think there's, that's why it's a, it's a crucial thing to maybe hopefully bring in more future talent. That way esports talk is not solely likable based off me. It's not hopefully the lucky show. Else. Yeah. yeah. Hopefully there's someone else that you can hate me and like them. That, like that's the goal. Mm -hmm. I, I, to answer your question, I don't mean to get off base. I would say, I would have to say the audience that rubs me the wrong way Ooh. and it, it's only a minute few it's a minute few it has to be the phase audience and yeah. it's only i would say it's justified okay let me, let it's me justified clarify. they're annoying as fuck as as a lot of young of teen boys are right i was probably the same way i thought you said you are a young teen boy now but then you've been telling people on twitter you're 32 so you, you would I never lie to someone two next week okay oh next um, week okay but I think the main thing is, is they got to realize that there's a lot of phase controversies. And I hope that, you know, whether now or three years from now or five years from now, they can look back and realize, okay, I, I, I'm going to cover these things. No matter who does them, if there are controversies that large with any org, mm -hmm. it's not my fault that it happens to be phase clan no. time and time again. And also to their, when phase is in controversies, it gets views for them and it gets views for those that cover them. So it's, and I, I almost always, when there's a controversy with any esports player, any org, I almost always end it by saying, hopefully they can learn from this. And For so sure. I, I think I cover it fairly. And those FaZe fans out there who are maybe offended by me saying this, you've also taught me a lot in approaching these situations. Okay, I need to balance the scales to end mm -hmm. that one. But the thing is, like, like these real fanatics, like, 
what <clears throat> one of their idols could like kill someone and then they get arrested and then they're gonna blame like the policeman who arrested them say no you've put them in jail it's like no that's not no it's because they killed someone it's like it's not your fault that f- some phase people are embroiled in drama just because you're reporting on it like it doesn't make any sense they're just fucked up in the head somewhat like it's, it's a weird okay that's maybe that's a bit harsh but it's a, a very weird perspective and it's like they're almost overprotective and they idolize mm-hmm. them so much to like they cannot do no wrong so anyone that yeah holds them accountable is thus like harming them or like treating them on like it's an injustice it's it's insane so i mean that makes sense i also think like optic fans um it depends what side you're on like that they, they oh move as like God. one unit if if um just ask like Chris Cheney or, or Optic J. Well, uh, J, mm. Ryan Musselman. He's not Optic J anymore. Uh, um, just ask those, like how things switched there that quickly with like the Optic Reddit, which was obviously fierce at the time. Um, how it went from like, Jay was the savior because he took over as the president of Infinite. And then uh, some people, including myself, say some things and reveal some truths. And then it's like, fuck jay and that's the only thing i saw for like three months it was like burnt into my eyelids every time i closed my eyes to sleep I oh, saw yeah. fuck jay you know it's just like it's just it's so fickle but like the optic fans yeah they they move as one unit they're like 300 that's a, yeah i mean i would compare optic fans to like brazilian fans i mean like to, to bounce really quickly i mean yeah optic fans are just like uh the phase stuff you got to be careful how you cover those things because like crim six once he left optic no longer gets away with what he could do if he was an optic or a sure. skunk did it. You know, Crim Six complains about something being unfair the first CDL season. Everyone hates Crim Six. Mm-hmm. Skump complains. Everyone loves Skump. And I want everyone to like outside looking in. It does not make sense. No. But sometimes you just roll with the punches and like I mean, it, it's crazy that that little um, that little back and forth between Crim Six and Skump, how how one-sided it seems, but then when Crim6 explains it, you're like, huh, seems like a pretty valid side of things, you know? Well, I, I think that says everything, but I mean, you, you're never going to be able to convince some people because they don't, they they want to be blind to everything else that goes on because then that means the people they follow are flawed and actual humans. Now they have to be like symbols of like everything holy in this world. Like, I don't know, it's, it's, it's crazy, mate. But anyway, I'll let you crack on with your day, probably go, um, drink a coffee, go to the, the office and the studio or whatever and put on some shorts and dance around for some Twitter <laughs> photos and then go record some videos on Alinity, like kicking a cat in the <laughs> face or summer and then, um, you know, like uh, standard everyday stuff for you. But I appreciate you taking the time, man. I would ask you if you wanted to plug your socials, but look, you've got like 79,000 times the amount I have, so you can fuck off. Um <laughs> Look, people know how to find you. If they know me, they probably know you because you are much bigger than me. And I, I appreciate you taking the time, mate, seriously. It's also weird not seeing you in a studio and on like a standard definition camera, by the way. That's very strange. I know. I need to figure out these interviews back in the office 100% next time. Or, yeah, I like being home doing it. I feel more relaxed at home. For sure, yeah. If you had like 17 lights on you and a big fuck off camera, mate. You'd, <laughs> yeah, that's not what you want when you're at home, is it? But no, thank you very much, mate. I appreciate you taking the time. And um, look, I, I would like to do this again, say if I'm about still in a year. Uh, see see where you've gone from now, compare now to, to then. That would be, be very interesting, man. Uh, Heck but, yeah. Uh, it's, you good know to see you, it's good to see you doing well, uh, obviously with everything going on, which I'm not going to talk about really because it's everyone's bored of it now. You know, but uh, thanks everyone watching. I'm not going to ask you to click any buttons and any bells or anything like that. Like, if you want real conversations and shit, you know where to come. All right. Cheers.